Greetings again. Back for more Dusty Groove unboxing. Looking forward to this. Did a big splurge. Uh, because I knew some things were on sale as such. Well, marked down. So I went nuts. Let's uh, get into this. Alrighty, now, oh, sorry, so let's start with this sucker, damn, Ohio Players Live, from 1977, finally got it, they reissued it, they put on this lovely blue vinyl limited edition, okay, I did have to pay a bit for it, but I believe it's, um, it feels like it's 2LP, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, I don't know. Oh, yeah, it is. Because I got fire over two sides. Well, fire one and two over two sides. Um, but it will show how much of an awesome live band they were, too. As much as a um, awesome studio band. <clears throat> so that is special. That is very special. Blue vinyl. Paid for it, but hey. Well, it reckons. Look at that. This price, I reckon, is 40 US. 28. So, hey. That is probably about right on the secondary market or whatever they would jack that up. Alrighty, <clears throat> now let's get into the extravaganza that is Black Jazz label reissues. There was a bunch on sale way below list price. And I went nuts. I admit it. I am hooked. Here we go. First up, Roland Haynes, second wave. This one's a little bit later, I believe it's, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, 1975, on the last, I think last year of Black Jazz, he's a, pretty sure he's a keyboard player, um, look at that, 14 new, US, down from 24, so, save 10 US already, brand spanking, awesome. There's one. Now, we're going to keep going with more black jazz. Cleveland Eaton. Plenty good eating. Yeah, brother. Look at that. Bass player. Um, famously played with um, Ramsey Lewis Trio Second Incarnation, early 70s one. Um, oh, that's awesome. But again, marked down, 14 bucks. That's why I had to do it. Well, I chose to do it. Next, another one. Doug Khan, Adam's Apple, $14. 74, 1974. Which, oddly, this is the only one, I think, in a white background. Um... Which is kind of funky. Oh, look there. Orange with black swell pressing. There you go. Limited 750 copies. Oh, there you go. Limited edition, apparently. Not that it really matters, but you know. Um, that's going to be very cool. All right. But again, limited edition and marked to 14. So, what the? What the? Uh, here we go. Keep going with um, Doug Khan, Revelation, 1973, with Jean Khan before they split and she became a singer, solo singer in her own right, and did more mainstream stuff. But this is more jazz, spiritual jazz. Um, again, 1973, again, fourteen dollars, brand spanking. Just beefing up the Black Jazz collection. Ah, and speaking of which, Doug Khan, Infant Eyes, $14. 1971, so this one's earlier. And there's Gene Khan as well on vocals. This is cool. Henry Franklin on bass. 
1971. Oh, this is when they did the whole flip upside down because in the record rack, I think that was their thing that in the record racks that part would stand out. You've got to turn upside down, it'd still be still see the same thing. I don't think they kept that up the whole time. Um, anyway, Walter Bishop Jr., fourth cycle. Oh, Junior's four cycles, sorry, Keeper of My Soul, 1973. Now, I did pay more for this one. It wasn't marked down, but wanted to up the collection. So I got it while I could. That one was a little bit more. Don't know why. No idea. Maybe it was the record label, you know, or distributors put them down or something. I don't know. The others are not that long. All right. Well, keep going with the Black Jazz label stuff. Oh, <laughs> there's that tough upside down thing. Um, and there we go. This one was 14. Walter Bishop Jr. Coral Keys. Damn. Nice. But yeah, this is in the flippy. Oh, flippy. So I got. Two Walter Bishop Jr. ones there. But that one is marked down. Um, oh, it's got Harold Vick and it's got Idris Muhammad. How's that? That's all right. Next, another one. Rudolph Johnson's Spring Rain. 14 again. First ever LP reissue of this 1971 album from Superb Sax Man. Rudolph Johnson. So hopefully it is superb. Uh, but again, mark down. Is this a flippy one? Yep, it's a flippy one because it's an early one. Flippy, flippy. Because um, yeah, I think the early ones they kept that up and then stopped playing that. Oh, here we go. We keep coming with the Black Jazz. The one and only Black Jazz, Kelly Patterson, Maiden Voyage. Her first album. But as a jazz singer album before she went more mainstream later. Um, on Shady Brook Records, I think. This one. Uh, again, $14. 14 dollars 14 She was Miss... Something. Miss one state. She was Miss... I forget which state. And she was in the pageant thing before she went on to singing. Um... Yeah, so this is not a flippy cover for some reason. It's a bit later, that's why. And, um, 73, that's why, yeah. They stopped doing the flippy thing. Uh, still, oh, wow. Okay, I really went nuts. All right. Chester Thompson Powerhouse. $14 again. 71 from the Tower of Power and Santana Organist. Um, I'm not sure how long he was with them, but anyway. Powerhouse. And I'm going to assume it's flippy. Yeah, it's flippy. Flippy, flippy. All right. And Lee's, oh, a non Black Jazz label, but hey, been up for this for a while. I had to snap it up while it was there. Yeah, I had to pay a little bit, 20 bucks US. Bill Scott Heron, Real Eyes. Oh, that's lovely. I'm pretty sure that's his kid. Be spooky if it wasn't, but anyway. Uh, 20 bucks, but you know, Bill Scott Heron stuff always is not cheap. I think this is late 70s or early 80s, something. There you go. Yeah, 1980, right on there. Um, but hey, Gil Scott Heron, what do you do? You buy it because it's Gil Scott Heron stood on his thing. But anyway, that's a massive haul. Damn, there's a lot to listen to. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Cheers. <laughs>